Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover why food shouldn't be labelled as healthy or unhealthy, and what a healthy diet really is. First and foremost, let's establish what exactly health or being healthy means. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. So something that is considered healthy should mean that it promotes physical, mental or social well-being. Simply put, health refers to the ability to survive. Being healthier will allow you to live longer, while being less healthy will reduce your life expectancy. With this definition in mind, let's explore how labeling foods as healthy may not be the best way to look at nutrition. So to claim that a food is healthy means that you are claiming that it will enhance either your physical, mental or social well-being and will improve your chances of survival. This definition means that the healthiness of a particular food for consumption is highly context specific. There are many considerations we need to make before deeming a food healthy or unhealthy in any particular situation. To understand this concept, let's use an example of two foods and apply them to two different contexts. So our two food choices we will compare are watermelon and pizza. Per 100 grams, watermelon has around 30 calories, while generic pizza will have around 266 calories. We can also see the macronutrient breakdown of each food here, with pizza having a much higher level of protein, carbohydrates and fat than watermelon. Now looking at the micronutrients, watermelon has a greater density of some micronutrients like vitamin C, while pizza has a greater density of other micronutrients like calcium. Watermelon is generally considered as a healthier food than pizza. This is probably true in the context of an obese individual who overeats calorie dense foods. For this individual, they will probably achieve greater health by eating watermelon as opposed to pizza, as it has a drastically lower calorie density, so it may help them lose weight. However, if we present these two food choices to a malnourished, starving person who barely has enough food to survive, then the healthiest food choice may differ. They will be better off consuming pizza, since it has a higher calorie density and more protein, carbohydrates and fats to fuel their daily energy needs, and potentially help them gain some weight. So before labeling a food as healthy or unhealthy, we need to understand what health actually means, the nutritional profile of the particular food, and the context of the individual. Now that we understand what health actually means, how does this apply to nutrition for body composition? Well, we need to understand that body composition is not the same as health. Generally, more muscle and less body fat is better for health outcomes, but not always. For example, being extremely muscular or being extremely lean can be detrimental to health. This case study of a drug-free bodybuilder going through a contest preparation found that at extremely lean levels, testosterone decreased, cortisol increased, sleep quality was lower, and anaerobic performance diminished. So being leaner and more muscular doesn't always result in better health outcomes and athletic performance improvements. However, when someone labels a food as healthy or unhealthy, they often have the implication that it is better for body composition rather than health. This is just another layer of misuse of the term healthy, not only is this an incorrect use of the term healthy, but it also is using the term to mean something else. So if the term healthy is often misused, what actually is a healthy diet? There is no specific definition of a healthy diet, but here are some general characteristics that a healthy diet should achieve. The first and most important component of a healthy diet is that it should allow you to maintain a healthy body fat level. This is a body fat which allows the trainee to hormonally function well. This means not being at an overly high body fat level and also not being too lean. Trainees often seek to push body weight up or down past healthy ranges in order to gain muscle mass or reach very lean levels. It should be understood that while this may be necessary to achieve aesthetic goals, it may not be the healthiest thing to do. However, these extreme body weights are usually only held for a short period of time before returning to a healthy and sustainable body fat level. The second component of a healthy diet is to meet the minimum nutrient requirements required for essential bodily functions. This includes both macronutrient intake, like protein, carbohydrate, and fat, and also micronutrient intake, like vitamins and minerals. There are minimum levels of different nutrients that are required for the body to function in its healthiest state. I am not a clinical nutritionist, so it will go beyond my scope of practice to go into the details of each nutrient and what its role is, but basically these nutrients can be intaken through a variety of different foods. Therefore, it is generally advisable to consume a variety of different meats, dairies, fruits, vegetables, grains and more. This will increase the likelihood that you are getting enough macro and micronutrients to maximize health. 
The next component of a healthy diet is the individual's relationship with food. This refers to how an individual feels emotionally about eating certain types of food. Feeling guilty, sad, anxious, or having negative associations about eating specific foods is generally an unhealthy dietary practice. It is best to understand that the nutrient makeup of the food determines its effect on health and body composition, and rationally understanding what effect this has. Any dogmatic view on specific foods generally results in a poor relationship with food and an unsustainable long-term diet. For example, the view that carbohydrates will make you obese is both a physiological incorrect stance and simply unsustainable dietary intervention that usually results in binging on carbohydrate-rich foods and feeling guilt and regret for eating it. So what is an unhealthy diet? Here are some components that are characteristic of an unhealthy diet. First is a diet which puts you in a chronically unhealthy body fat level. This usually means excessively high body fat levels, which is associated with many chronic diseases. However, unhealthy body fat levels can also refer to extreme leanness. As we mentioned earlier, taking your body fat to extreme leanness also seems to reduce markers of health. The second component of an unhealthy diet is one that involves nutrient deficiencies. We require a certain level of different macro and micronutrients each day, and failing to meet these minimum requirements may result in poorer health outcomes. This is usually associated with individuals failing to eat certain food groups as part of their regular diet. For example, someone who eats minimal fruit and vegetables may not be getting the required amounts of certain vitamins and minerals. The next component that may indicate an unhealthy diet is drastic fluctuations in weight. This refers to rapid weight gain followed by rapid weight loss or vice versa. While drastic changes in weight are sometimes required for physique competitors and athletes required to weight cut to make a weight class, this generally doesn't occur on a consistent basis. Rather, we are referring to individuals who have potentially disordered eating habits and go through rapid weight gain and rapid weight loss phases in an ongoing cycle. Since our body generally aims to maintain homeostasis at all times, rapid changes in weight may be a significant stress to bodily systems and will more likely result in negative health outcomes. The next component of an unhealthy diet is having a poor relationship with food. This is the exact opposite to what we mentioned in the characteristics of a healthy diet. A poor relationship with food refers to having emotional feelings associated with specific food intakes. For example, being scared or anxious about eating food at a restaurant because you don't know what the calorie and macronutrients are. This can promote mental and behavioral issues like social isolation and anxiety. And the last characteristic associated with an unhealthy diet is having dogmatic views about certain foods. This refers to black and white thinking about foods, labeling them as inherently good or bad. This is usually due to a lack of knowledge about nutrition and physiology. Understanding the nutrient makeup of specific foods and the general physiology behind how foods are used as energy allows individuals to look at foods with more rationale. Having these dogmatic views about food goes back to the previous point about your relationship with these foods. Having these dogmatic views of specific foods can result in nutrient deficiencies and promote a poor relationship with food. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.